Cannot believe I'm doing this. To start Boku no Pico off, we have this very wholesome scenery with some very wholesome water. And a very wholesome main character named Tamotsu, who happens to be sti- Bro, are you forgetting something? I'm not doing it. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm sorry, what? Am I done yet? Keep going! HAPPINESS! I EAT no HAPPINESS! To start Boku no Pico off, we have this very wholesome scenery with some very wholesome water and a very wholesome main character named Tomotsu. Or actually main character for now because unfortunately the main character title gets stripped away from him later on. Which I don't understand why because this dude is a real pro with the ice cubes. But I digress. To now really start off Boku no Pico for real this time. Like I promise I'll get through the intro this time and I'm absolutely not stalling to get to the 10 minute mark. But we have this very wholesome scenery, very wholesome water, whatever the f that means, and a very wholesome main character named Tomotsu, who happens to be staring at the very wholesome scenery, which soon after leaves, and now he's sad. He then goes to the viewing scope in search of another glorious and wholesome view. So he puts a quarter in, and what does he see through this lens? Oh, that's right, nothing because it was a scam. But through sheer desperation, he enters more of these quarters, down to his last in hopes of getting this machine to work. Well, fun fact, it never did. So following this traumatic event, Tomotsu takes his sorry ass to the nearest Bebe, or Bibi, in his premium green soccer mom whip, because he has to flex like a true champ. Here he orders an iced coffee with extra ice, why don't you just get a bowl at this point? But while he was chilling, sipping on his iced coffee with extra ice, he meets the actual main character of the show, Pico, and her, <coughs> his grandfather, whose name is literally Oji-san. How very creative. And oh my- Upon this encounter, Oji-san tells Tomotsu that his grandson <coughs> has no friends and to please spend time with him. Nothing weird about that, asking a grown ass man to hang out with your grandson. I mean granddaughter. Oh wait, I was actually right the first time. But ain't nothing wrong with that, because it sucks to be lonely, right? You know, we all can relate. And Pico needs some friends. Friends. So what better way to get friends than to ask a very wholesome grown man who has accomplished a lot in life Probably possibly not and he just looks Trustable so with Tomotsu being Tomotsu he complies with this proposal because he too has no friends and having friends in the same age group is Overrated anyways, so the following day they take a walk don't mind them. It's a hot Sunday afternoon or Monday or Tuesday I don't care and they're out looking for some ice cream while holding hands. Nothing weird here. And as they are walking, they encounter something. And that something seems to be the scam machine poor Tomotsu fell for the other day. Which instantly triggers his PTSD. So to take his mind off things, he actually does get the ice cream that they were aiming for on this fine day. Except due to recent spending habits, he was only able to afford one cone. Which sunk every bit of his being in depression. But with Pico being the great main character that he is, he then offers up his leftovers and oh god. First the coffee and now this! So with Pico making this mistake, he then searches for a solution and uh, I'm no expert but I don't think that's doing anything. However, in the midst of Pico's cleanup duty, both Tomotsu and Pico hear gunfire, and so they do the best course of action, which is to stop, drop, and roll. And God damn it, not the seats! So moving forward, they manage to escape the crossfire on foot. They could have used the car, but come on guys. There was ice cream on the seats. They then book it to Tomotsu's apartment where Tomotsu offers Pico his backup clothes. Don't ask questions about his fashion choice because let's be real here guys, he probably has better fashion choice than you all. So with Pico drenched from the rain, he puts on these clothes. But as you can tell, he wasn't really feeling it. So being a rude bitch that he is, he stripped and dipped. Of course taking his orange jacket with him because running butt naked outside would kind of suck. And also the jacket is perfect for his budget Naruto cosplay. So with Pico on the run, this worried Tomotsu. Tomotsu. Tomotsu then searched every corner of the city, including Pico's grandfather's cafe, or I'm sorry, Oji-san's cafe, which has been given the beautiful name of 
Bebe. And would you look at that? It seems Oji-san already moved on, and he is not phased by his grandson's disappearance. And this is what you would call an S-tier grandpa. No matter how stressful the situation is, don't sweat it and grab your pipe and embrace your inner boomer. So after searching for some time, Tomotsu takes a turn into the graveyard, because that's obviously the greatest hiding spot of all time. And as evidence, he finds Pico there. See, I told you it's the best spot. And wait, hold up! My man's got a fresh cut! I can see that he was going for the Joey Wheeler. In terms of execution, let's not talk about that. So upon finding Pico in this lively graveyard, they head to the beach because every anime needs a beach episode. And here is where they splash water on each other in the middle of the night because daytime is overrated. And yeah... Definitely nothing weird goes on here. So moving forward to the next morning, Tomotsu is no longer with us, and who knows what happened to him. Did he die, go missing, or start an OnlyFans to bounce back from the scam machine? Well, regardless of what happened to Tomotsu, here we are in our present day with our true main character, riding his bike and going places. But this isn't any ordinary day. As he is traveling on his bike, he then stops and notices something coming up for the water. Is it a huge fish? Oh, no, it's... A completely naked boy whose name happens to be Chico so to not make things awkward Pico smiles at this boy without a single creepy intention in mind like let's be real here guys Pico is as wholesome as they come absolutely no pun intended because that would be dirty so with this encounter they instantly become friends because they have something in common clothes really are overrated so with Pico's newly acquired friend he goes to his house and my god what a beautiful day to do wholesome things am I right like sleeping on a tree completely exposed to the world and entirely safe from fall damage but moving forward it's midnight and rather than just heading to bed like normal kids they head to the attic where the finest of fine china is located and very innovative toys so as they are up in this attic they notice a crack in the flooring which isn't a safety hazard in any way shape or form while noticing the crack they look through this crack and what do they see well it kind of seems to me it's Hey yo, who turned off the light? Well then, moving forward to the next morning, Chico's older sister, who has been given the great name of <laughs> Monko, which I believe her parents looked very deep in the dictionary for, made Pico and Chico a delicious breakfast, served with a side of fresh fruit that may or may not have been used for medical purposes. So after grubbing down on that scrumptious breakfast and potentially HIV positive fruit, they bike. Because you gotta burn them calories somehow, and I think think there's a seat on the bike for a reason. Uh, I guess that's one way to use it. And there he goes being savage again. This is exactly what you deserve. Was this staged? So then, looking at how things are, it seems they got tired. And so they decide to go back indoors and play a game of hide and go seek. Like, how wholesome is that? And, oh, now they're cross-dressing. And now we have Pico sitting in a tree butt naked. What? <laughs> What's going on here? So continuing our Boku no Pico adventures, we are now in the city, walking at night. Nothing dangerous here because it's Tokyo. And there you go, a city power outage. Oh wait, what's this? A main character entrant? I think your dress fell off. So you're telling me the power went out for the whole city just for one person to jump into some water. Now that's what you call a true main character. I can't wait to meet her. And introducing another scam machine. Wait, he actually got something out of one of these? Oh, and look, the main waifu has arrived, whose name is Coco. Man, I'm not gonna lie, I've been getting tired of the sausage fest that we've been having for the past few minutes. Welcome to the team. So with being the true waifu of the show, Coco then invites the boys over to her place, which isn't sketchy at all. You just have to walk through an underground train tunnel where you could possibly get splattered at any given moment. And to top it off, it's literally pitch black. The anime may give us the illusion that there's light, but if you look around, the lights are off. But look at these champs with their 25-20 vision. Navigating through a tunnel without a flashlight in a zone where they can get hit by a train. That's how you know we got some good and solid main characters. Only real main characters believe in and embrace the plot armor. And after a while, taking this nice little walk down this tunnel, they found Coco's place, which has fully functioning electricity, running water, and a full refrigerator with a perfectly stacked cake that was probably shoplifted. Now my question here is... 
who decided it was a good idea to construct a random ass room in the middle of an underground train tunnel and just left it there after installing plumbing and electricity. Anyways, putting all logic aside, it's bedtime and so everyone went fast to sleep. Except Pico, who seems to be struggling because of the 4 liters of lemon juice he decided to consume before heading to bed. And why would he do this? I don't know, he tried to get drunk? So while heading to the bathroom, Pico hears something going on behind these pink curtains. And what's behind curtain number one? Oh god. Oh god, no. Well then, moving forward, we are continuing our Boku no Pico adventures in some clean brand new fits that unfortunately we cannot see because we are still in a pitch black tunnel. Oh wait, hold up. Never mind. So upon leaving the tunnel, they have a nice little walk around the city, coming in contact with a pretty spicy billboard. At least Chico appreciates it. After a while, they feel the urge to release, and so they take a nice little detour and... For a second there, I almost mistaken the show's main waifu as a dude. Coco would never deceive us like that. And also, returning to the matter at hand, did they not believe in trees or something? Because what, what, what what's going on here? Well anyways, moving forward, they find themselves walking into an amusement park, where they don't even ride a single ride. Instead, Chico decides to drop his life savings in a scam machine, and gets... scammed. Oh, crazy how that works. So after the wholesome fun they had at the amusement park, or whatever that park was, it only had like two rides, but they returned to Coco's place to sleep. Which really has me wondering if Pico's grandfather even cares for him at this point. Fuck them kids. So in the middle of the night, Pico gets that same urge again. It's like history repeats itself, because on his way to the bathroom, he hears something behind those curtains. So, what's behind curtain number two? Just, just... Just cut to the next scene. So moving forward, we really are living in a slice of life anime because we're walking around the city again. But today is different. Instead of doing a full lap around Tokyo, Coco stops midway and tells them, BRB, I got some milk to pick up at the grocery store. That shit slaps. After taking some time to process those wise words she said, that's right, she, there are no such things as traps in anime. That would be evil. But moments after, this is when Pico and Chico realize Coco is allergic to dairy. So without any hesitation, they run after that mad lad, searching every possible place in the city except the grocery store. They even went as far as searching Coco's house, which was looted. So much for having a secret base. <laughs> so after running a straight marathon around Tokyo, they see something in the sky. And what is that thing in the sky? Well, it's a tower. And what was the name of it again? Oh. So heading to the top of Tokyo Tower, they hold hands because with the power of friendship, anything is possible. See? And they find Coco at the top. And uh, from time to time, homies gotta show love to one another, you know? And what? What was that? Whoa, and there's fireworks. How very cool and spectacular. And see, this is the content I live for. Nothing but a truly wholesome experience and ending just, mm, masterpiece. Ooh, this ending kind of goes. Okay, I think I need to stop. Keep going. Oh, sabi shiku nanka shi nakara. Oh, hitori ni nanka. Help me, please. All right then. So you've reached the end of this video. Congrats. Also, thank you. And April Fools, I guess. Even though I technically just made a fool out of myself for making a whole video on a long dead meme. But regardless, hope you all did enjoy. And yeah, as of recent, I have been getting a lot of messages from you guys spamming me to do another one of these projects. However, it's a pretty hefty job if you didn't know. And I will be making a video in the near future addressing the whole situation. But in short, since I do not want to ramble on for too long, to increase the rate of me doing these larger scale video projects, consider supporting me on Patreon. And under my goals, you will see the return of anime minutes, which essentially paraphrases everything that I have to say regarding the matter. Seeing how things are right now, it's looking like a yearly thing. If not, something I'll do every two years or so. And along with supporting the channel, there are some pretty cool perks that come along with it, so you know it's right there. Anyways, once again, thanks for watching, and I will see your beautiful faces next time. Peace.